This is Changeling the Podcast. Welcome to Changeling the Podcast. Come for the glamour, stay for the vibes. I'm your host, Josh, and with us is your other host, Puka. Say hi, Puka. Buonasera. What are we talking about today, Puka? I confess that I'm feeling a little bit starstruck because we are sitting with some of the writers and creators and developers of this game that we know and love and have devoted countless hours of audio to talking about. So we're here with the Changeling team. Um, the C20 team, I should say. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Do you, shall we have you all go around and introduce yourselves? Yeah, sure. Alphabetical. We 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 <laughs> You should on probably said. Wait, alphabetical by first or last name? <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> in, in books, I usually do it by last, but you know. <laughs> oh, sounds crap. good to me. I remember that everyone's first things first. <laughs> so should I just jump right into it then? Go for yep. it, yes. Um, hi, my name is Christine Beard. Um, Changeling has a special place in my heart. It is the first uh, game I worked professionally on. So it will always, always have that place for me. Um, I don't know what else I should say. <laughs> that sounds like a good start. So Cool. Thank you. I guess that means I'm next. I'm Charlie Cantrell. Uh, like Christine, Changeling was the was my first professional role playing gig as well, and uh, I've been playing slash running Changeling since oh the mid nineties. <laughs> so Changeling has a very special place in my heart as well. Um, so I was really happy that that was my first. All right. I guess I'm next. Um, hi, I'm Ian Lemke. Uh, I am uh, Changeling is my second role playing gig. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Your first role playing gig was before Changeling, so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's true. But uh, yeah, so I'm sort of the, I guess the uh, the OG uh, uh, designer and uh, developer for uh, for Changeling the Dreaming back in the day. Uh, hi, I'm Pete Woodworth. Uh, Changeling was also my first professional gig, although it was the LARP book and not a tabletop book, but we've been over that previously in this podcast. So yeah, I've been playing and running Changeling since it came out uh, and uh, working on C20 was a very lifelong dream. I'll put it that way. Thanks, everyone. So we're doing this kind of roundtable style. Uh, We have a list of questions and... I guess we'll just kind of ask them and then as people feel like they want to answer them, just jump right in or do the, the popcorn method or whatever. I don't know how people do Q and A's anymore, but what is the popcorn method? You, you give your answer and then say, but I'm now going to pass it over to Christine. And then ah, got it. Okay. I guess to start off, we were kind of kicking around some things that we wanted to know more about and can you talk a little bit about what the process was for the Changeling 20th anniversary edition coming into being? Like, was it always planned that there would be a 20th anniversary Changeling or was it kind of once vampire was the proof of concept, then the other games sort of fell into place? Hmm. Does anyone have a good answer on that one? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I think Uh, I can, I think I can jump on that a little bit. Um, Mostly, uh, I think the 20th anniversary lines in general were, at least when it started, kind of a shot in the dark. And then Vampire had such a big response that they just decided to keep rolling. And um, there was some speculation about where they would cut off because, you know, Mm. were they going to do 20th anniversary Demon the Fallen? Were they going to do, you know, Mummy? Like, you know, the the sort of the later games and uh, then Changeling came roaring out with one of the best Kickstarters, period. And it proved that it had the legs, but there wasn't, I mean, I think as I'm, I'm not, uh, Rich Thomas would know better, but from the discussions that I was involved in back in the Onyx Path time, it was um, the 20th anniversaries had proved to be so popular that once Vampire succeeded, they immediately started thinking of at least doing the quote, the original three, 
you know, vampire, werewolf, uh, and mage. And then at, when those were successful, they figured let's try wraith. And then, you know, and a uh, changeling though, I think was always going to be the cutoff, even if it had happened. I think that was always the plan. That, that's my best understanding of it as well, though. I actually came in on the changeling 20, um, uh, it had already been decided that it was being done. When, it going to be, mm. be going to be happening when I came in. So. Wasn't it like yeah. was it Changeling overtook the Werewolf Kickstarter by thirty dollars or vice versa? Something it's neck and neck. Yeah. Yes, I, I remember that, and I remember the celebration that happened in the <laughs> online communities when that happened. <laughs> it's so much cheering. <laughs> we told you. I think the the. <laughs> Despite the fact that Werewolf, uh, you know, overall was a better selling game, you know, back in mm. the nineties and early two thousands, I, I think the the Changeling fan base is maybe a, a little a little more hardcore. Just just a tad <laughs> <laughs> obsessive. Uh. Rabid is the word that I've always used. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I also said like Changeling was the only other one besides Vampire that was relatively easy and fun to LARP because uh, Werewolf has a lot of stuff that you can't really WYSIWYG. Uh, Wraith is really weird with shadows. Mage is Jess Heinig did an amazing job on Laws of Ascension making Mage work for LARP, but it's not friendly to it. But mm-hmm. Changeling is. And that yeah. all, I think contributed a lot to its ongoing success is there are still so many Changeling LARPs I know. I've always got to put in a plug for my LARP people. But. Yeah. And, and <laughs> tying it into the Kickstarter, definitely I would say like my LARP, Changeling LARP friends, friends, when the C20 Kickstarter came out, were the ones, a lot of them were jumping into it. Yeah. So that would, mm-hmm. I think that helped push the numbers up. It made me happy <laughs> <laughs> to see that. So I think, Charlie, when we spoke with you before, I remember you had kind of told the story about how you got involved with the 20th anniversary, and it was a wonderful anecdote. But opening that up to the room, can each of you share how you got involved and what roles you had over over the course of C20? Well, should I should I re- reshare that story as a short version or just let somebody else go? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear it. Yeah. No, Char- Charlie, you can start and then we'll bring in everybody. That sounds good. Um, well, I got into C20 um, back when the Wraith 20th anniversary Kickstarter got announced. Um, I saw that and cheered because I knew that if they were doing Wraith, then surely to goodness they'd do Changeling. I went to the Onyx Path website and read their submission guidelines and I knew that I really wanted to be part of it. So I read their submission guidelines did my submission based on those guidelines and then ended up writing on changeling over the subject matter that I submitted in my, (laughs) in my writing (laughs) sample. Uh, of course the, the final product in C20 turned out completely different than what was in my writing sample, but, uh, but it was still the same subject matter. So that was fun. Yeah. I have a kind of a similar story. I was actually, my submission had went in just a little bit earlier for some of the, uh, new world of darkness lines. Um, because, as much as I love working on fantasy, horror is like my true wheelhouse. So that's that's what I had originally put in for, which might why, be why I ended up with things like the Thalane and doing like things with the Shadow Court, because that's <laughs> yes. that's where uh, my heart truly lies, as I'm sure some of the people here can tell you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was really cool to get to work on something that obviously meant so much to other people already and kind of like bring a new perspective to it. She's going to be really mad at me for mentioning this. Oh, no. But there's also video <laughs> footage of her getting the call of and getting the uh, acceptance for, or like getting asked to do Changeling. It's very oh. cute. So, oh. so baby, 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 <laughs> Christine, awesome. baby Christine, from the time she was like six, wanted to be a writer. So I got my first, you know, like, oh, hey, we want to work with you. So, yes, I sent Pete a video, and I think it was literally me just hopping around my kitchen squealing. Yep. Um, <laughs> like, I was just so excited. I was like, I get to be a writer. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> it was I, I was at work when I got the email saying that I that, that asking if I wanted to join the team. So I couldn't be quite that exuberant at the time. So. <laughs> no. But when I got home, there was much celebrating. <laughs> I had just gotten out of the uh, computer game 
business, which I'd been in for about a decade, uh, and decided that I did not want to go back. <laughs> I was done with working on computer games and that I should go back to what I really loved, which was, uh, you know, tabletop role playing games. So at that time, I was just sort of throwing out my hat and, you know, saying, hey, uh, my work out there, just seeing what I could get into. I didn't even know if I could, as it had been so long since I'd really been involved heavily. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I heard Changeling 20 was happening, so I contacted Onyx Path, and you know they brought me on board. It was a, it was a kind of. I mean, I was very excited about it, um, and it, it was really cool to be working on Changeling again because uh, I'll be honest, of all the games I've worked on. It's still the closest to my heart. It always will be. I love Changeling. It, it, there's some pain there too, but you know um, that, that's a whole different story. But yeah, it, so, so it was a little, it was a little awkward for me almost going into this. It was like because you know for so long, you know for for five years or whatever, you know, Changeling had been my game, and so coming in is okay. I'm going to be a writer on this project was kind of a, a, a weird transition, but I but I had a great time. Everyone was so awesome, and I, I just had so much confidence that it was going to come together really well, and I think it did. So that's nice. my story. I also I will say um, I made an absolute pest of myself on the on the Onyx Path developer <laughs> group uh, chat as it were when because I was a writer and developing and I just as soon as it was remotely possible I was an absolute pest um, until I said I want to do it 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 and they finally said yes okay yes yes you can um, you can do this um, and uh, just leave us alone yeah I, yeah pretty much because I, I said if I you know I said to my wife i was like if i don't if i don't try as hard as possible i will regret it forever if i don't get this gig so um i i politely but very relentlessly uh p- poor rich just put up with so many messages <laughs> uh you know saying is there going to be a t-, you know because they had to keep it under wraps until they decided to announce it so he would say well maybe well you know well you know well and finally he's like yeah okay you know we're this is how it's going to run this is who's running it you know uh and you can talk to them but i think they want you on board I can I can actually add a little to because I was I was in not that I'm trying to like play the insider card or whatever but just because I was early on the team when there was there was mention early on of like hey Ian might come back and everyone freaked out uh, because <laughs> <laughs> we we wanted you know there was that was that was an easy one that was an easy add to the team <laughs> um, there was no question there and also uh, for what it's worth Charlie I thought you should know that one of the things when we were looking at the freelancers who had who had applied who we thought might be good for it like this wasn't ultimately my decision i'm not taking credit for it but uh i think the, the i think the description was uh for for you charlie was the heart of the fandom uh i think was the description that was <laughs> given Aww. I would not argue with that statement. <laughs> so, so yeah, so so that was one of the major selling points. I mean, everyone knew you. Everyone knew you were passionate about it. But like, you know, this person is the heart of the fandom, and that was not argued about by anybody. Um, mm-hmm. so. Oh wow! <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's that's oh, awesome. Yeah. For the record, feel free to play as many insider cards as you feel like during this conversation. <laughs> I probably don't have nearly the deck that Ian does, but, you know, I have a few. <laughs> On Changely 20, you probably have just as many, if not more, than I do, honestly, because I was um, kind of I was kind of point. A, a weird almost outsider on that one. It was, it was, it was, like I said, it was, it was a lot of fun. I was really glad to be, to be there and be part of it, but it also just, it, I don't know. It was kind of an awful. Well, there were, there were times in the author chat where I think everyone sort of stopped and turned and looked at you or looked at Nikki and Jackie and kind of was like, is this all right with the, the, the guardians of changeling, you know, this, this yeah. is okay. Which, 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 I, which I was fine with. That was that was good. But I sort of didn't want, you know, because yeah. I, I felt I felt like it was sort of being handed to a new generation, and that you all should make those decisions, you know. <laughs> and, you, um, you, I remember you sending an email saying like, "Hey, I'm just another guy on this project. You know, if that that sounds cool to me, you know, don't worry about you know what I think." But it was hard not to. <laughs> I, I remember that email, and and I had the same reaction that Pete had. So. <laughs> I, I do think it's pretty cool right now that we have like you know two of like you know the the older guard and then the two people who are like we were fresh faced little babies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the old gray beards. <clears throat> yep. At the risk of being impolitic, I don't, we can 
we can cut this if it's a loaded question, but do you think any of you would have been as excited to get the call for any other game in the in the X20 line or otherwise? Like, was no, this... No, no. <laughs> yeah. Probably not as excited. I, I still would have loved to do any World of Darkness game, but Changeling is my the one nearest and dearest to my heart. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Right on. I mean, on the sort of flip side, I'm, I'm actually working on on a game that I, you know I never thought I would, and and I'm just totally in love with, which is the Expanse um, role playing oh, game. So, yeah. Oh, that's oh, yeah. so much fun. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's like sort of another dream job for me there. Yeah. So. <laughs> nice. But yeah, changing, changing. Uh, I mean, yes, I, I love working on the World of Darkness. I've worked on almost every game line at this point, at one point or another. But Changeling is always going to be the one um, that's always going to be the most exciting thing for me. Mm-hmm. Excellent, Josh. Do you want to take sure. the next one? Or... So, can you sp- uh, can you speak your approach to writing Changing the Dreaming, either for C twenty or? things related or storyteller vault or anything like that something about your approach to writing for for changeling Hmm. i'll let others take the lead on that or i'll jump in (laughs) (laughs) This this is a hard one because because you know when you start a project like this, the first thing you always do is read the outline from the developer. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's really, you know, what the developer wants oh, you to bless do. Bless you so. for doing that. Bless you, bless you for doing that. <laughs> well, if there's one thing you learn is that you don't last long in this industry if you don't give them what they asked you for. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> yes. So, yes, that is the crucial first step. Um, Very. But, yeah, but for me with this setting in particular, a lot of it is finding where you can get the magic in everyday life. Like some of the silliest things that I loved that I wrote up were a lot of like little random treasures and things. And like one was like a hard drive that I think had a spring power in it where you could, like it was, it was a backup save. You could go back and do something again. So like in this day and age, yeah, that's, that's a hard drive. That's a backup file. That's um, so finding like little moments of like, where, where can I make this just that little bit more magical and like, you know, bring that kind of childish fun and wonder back into the world where, you know, the autumn is threatening everything and banality is going to, you know, could take over if you don't open yourself to that. For me, it, like, again, I'll go back to that sort of awkwardness. It was like, okay, I did this before. Um, what, what am I bringing to the table now? Yes, I I know Changeling. Yes, I've worked on you know I was a developer for five years. But what what can I really bring to this new thing? And uh, so I really tried to think about in the in the sections that I was assigned to work on, like what did I miss the first time around? I mean, you know, I was I was a twenty something kid basically when I was developing <laughs> Changeling initially um, with no background other than tons of gaming, you know, at all. But um but there were there were just I, I, I tried to bring something new to it, a little little new spin, a little uh, you know, I, I think what Christine said they're just finding uh, the the bits of magic kind of to to bring forward um when I was working on C twenty. Yeah, I think w- when I came to it, I actually, I kind of looked at it as, I think a little bit like, like Ian did, is I, I started off working on Changeling a long time ago. And when I wrote The Shining Host, I was 18. And <laughs> like, when you're 18... Well, you weren't you weren't even 18, weren't you? When you said- yeah, I was, I was 17 when I signed the contract. Don't, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, really good job for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, and, but like... Now, when you're 17 or 18, you look at it and think, of course, grumps are anyone over 25. And then you get to be <laughs> in your yeah. late 30s when this book is coming out. You go, hang on. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like yeah. the dream. Well, because one of the things, that it, but that was actually like a big thing I thought about when I was w- starting into it is like, you know, this idea of like, as I got older, I realized that, you know, this, uh, while well, I, you know, I love the original Changeling model. I'm like, I, I feel like we kind of, we wrote it from a very young perspective. And now that yes. many of us are older, we're looking at it and thinking like, you know, yes. I mean, kids are bursting with imagination and so forth, but like, I'm much better at my craft than I was, you know, as an artist mm-hmm. when, than when I was 18, you know, like, yep. I'm, I think that's one of the reasons that like the decision to sever chronological age from the seemings came around 
you know, some people are just perpetual childings and, you know, they, they have this wonder in life, like, mm-hmm. um, and some people are old souls and they're, you know, they're grumps, you know, even though they're young and, and so forth. And it, it just was, but looking at it generationally, as it were, like kind of coming back to it and going, okay, now that I'm not the, the young wilder, uh, you know, as it were, like, what do I bring to this now? That's one of the changes that, I mean, I, I admit when it, when it was first discussed, I kind of had a knee jerk negative reaction to it, which I kept quiet mm-hmm. at the time, but I, I just was like, Oh, I don't want to change that. I don't want to see that change. But, but the way it ended up working out, I, I was like, yeah, this is better. You know, this, 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 <laughs> this works so much better than, than what we did initially. So Yeah. One of my favorite things about that specifically, I think I actually wrote that section was you can, you can go forward. Obviously you progress from, yeah. Um, childling to wilder to grump, but certain things can bring you back into a younger mindset. You could be a grump for ages and then mm-hmm. find that thing that just like mm-hmm. reopens your eyes and invigorates you again, and you can become a childer again. It was it was really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that actually ties into the next question we had listed. Yeah. In, in case there's somebody wanting to go more into their uh, <laughs> more into their writing, but is the perfect. Is it okay if we ask the next question, or does somebody want to go right ahead? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So, how did you decide which elements of the setting to change and not change from second edition to C twenty? It was a combination of like a of the developer and and then discussions, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. Or as I recall, yeah. But like through the process, I guess. Yeah. We had a very lively email thread for a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we really did, and it was a great thread. Like it was a really great discussion. Um, Honestly, C20 so far has been had the most discussion among the writers of any project I've worked on. I yeah, think. no, hands so down. Was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think we felt like we had something precious in our hands, you know, and we yes, wanted to make sure definitely. we did it right. But I also mm-hmm. think uh, the decisions were a lot of times were just brought. People would bring something to the to the email thread and just be like, "Hey, what do you guys think of this?" You know, and usually with the rationale, like, you know, like if we're going to take seeming away from chronological age, here's why I think that would be a good idea. And then we'd, mm-hmm. we'd kick it around for a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was very much a collaborative decision. I mean, yes, we have a, we had a developer, but mm-hmm. like um, it was really, you know, we kind of went back and forth and kind of worked out what we wanted to change collectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was a great yeah, process. Was... I mean, yeah, that was good. Sorry, Charlie, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 that, that was, I was just affirming. <laughs> that, was, uh-huh. <laughs> that was a great question. Yeah, I was just going to, I was just going to piggyback off of what Pete just said. Cause like everyone would like throw ideas out there on that discussion thread. And then, you know, other people would, would comment on it and everything. And I remember in particular, there was one thing that I was debating on so hard about, uh, cause I had banality as one of my sections <laughs> trying to figure out how to modernize banality because that was one of the the mandates in it uh, in the in the outline, and just I wasn't sure how to go about it. So I just to open up discussion, I threw out the idea of uh, oh gosh, what was it like a hierarchy of sins like vampire humanity uh, for for banality. Um, yeah. And then Pete, I think it was you who came back and really gave me the spark of an idea of where to take it from there. Because you were like, this was great back in the 90s, but we've all grown since then, I think is what you said. And so, um, <laughs> oh, uh, so that sounds, that sounds very pompous. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, no, I mean, I mean it, was, it was great. It was great advice. I loved it. Uh, it was super helpful. And it really got me thinking in a different direction and uh, and got uh, to the idea of the uh, of the banality triggers that made it into mm. uh, into C20. Yep. Those were great. Yeah, those are really fun to work with. Yeah, yeah, I, I love those. That's <laughs> that that and the banality chart. Like that chart, I find so helpful when it like lists like this is what it's like for a mortal at this banality. Like that just I don't know who was that also you, Charlie, or was that that wasn't me? Um, no, okay, I forget who did that one. Yeah, I find that like compared to like previous changeling running like so helpful to just point at people and go like my players and go okay here you go this is what it means to, <laughs> you know banality six or something so i felt like so many things in, in c20 really did that it was, took the ideas that were sort of three quarters formed um mm-hmm. yeah. uh, <laughs> with the original changeling and really solidified them into something that made more sense 
and, and it works better because one of the paradoxes of change zone was, was you know, and I, and it was something I always had a, a difficult time getting across again, you know, I was in my twenties. I didn't express everything as well as I should have. Um, but uh, the, the idea, I mean, technology is not always, you know, is not always banal. You know, it, 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 a lot of times it can be, you know, staring at your cell phone all day. Yeah, okay, that is, you know, but uh, and, and surfing through through social media is not is not really doing anything, not interacting with it. But the changelings came back because of the moon landing, which yeah. was a huge scientific, yeah, yeah. you know, endeavor. Mm-hmm. So, or at least in part because of that. <laughs> so it's sort of this paradox. Yeah, and I, I, th- I thought, you know, go ahead. I was going to say, I think in the original version, like science was just banal, and like we kind of change that for this version to be like yeah certain yeah. things or can be really sometimes weird. it depends but <laughs> yeah. It's exactly yeah yeah, yeah. So don't be yourself it yeah. is banal except for this one thing that opened the wellsprings again um <laughs> again it's something wasn't expressible because <laughs> it, it, it depends <laughs> how the science works. Works. or the yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and even i think i think it's written in there not like even now like yeah data entry probably not great but like discovering a new species there's all sorts of magic in that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Rich Dansky touched on it in Kith Book Knocker too, is the, you know, knockers are the joy of science, but they're mm-hmm. science with an exclamation point. You know, they're Adam Savage. <laughs> you know, they're, they're super <laughs> yes. will let's light it on fire and blow it up. But like, but still, they're science. You know, they're the wonder of science in some way. They're, they're um, not science, they're science. Science? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing is I know exactly what gesture you made with that too. <laughs> I think also a lot of what went into was, I mean, to be honest, for, for a lot of the people on the thread, um, I think a lot of it was things that had been sort of become house rules forever um, mm. that people are like Autumn She had been something mm-hmm. that had kind of existed in the fandom for a long time and in a lot of settings like the, but they were never distinguished really. Yeah. There was mention of them in books. Like yes. I, I went through and I think all but one house founder for some reason ended up as a changeling like even in first yeah. and second edition, but we never got so rules the, for that. So this idea of Autumn She was always there and I always really loved it because I thought it would also provide a really good contrast to the Arcadian She and and that mm-hmm. would encourage Arcadian She players to be really weird and alien and mm-hmm. more fey. And then you have it and so like it was a lot of this stuff that that we had, I think a lot of us had seen in games or seen on forums or seen in discussions or had used in our own games that we were like, you know, this really works and people really like it. Why don't we just, you know, bring it in? I know that's something which Josh, I think you and I have both had this experience, like on discord talking with people where they reference some kind of rule and we're both like, wait, what? And, you know, you have to like go back and flip through pages and be like, Oh yeah, you know, I, I remember this being a thing, but it's not in here. And then, like yeah it was just part of the conversation for so long and then Mm -hmm. finally appeared yeah so i have a sort of a specific setting question if nobody knows that's fine but like do you know why it ended up becoming the history the whole week of nightmares was like tied into like late second edition and whatnot and and sort of various events happening world of darkness but c20 cut that out but it's still in other 20th anniversary games from before so do you know why that got cut or why that got changed i do not okay the Um, only thing i remember was early on i think there was a discussion that it felt like it would have taken the entire setting in such a strong direction that we didn't necessarily want it to bind mm -hmm. people into it um Mm mm-hmm I, that that's yeah. a vague memory though i can't i can't swear by that yeah i i don't remember specifics either but yeah that sounds about right but i mm-hmm. do think if i remember right there was some discussion about how the descent into the evanescence you know was it the week of nightmares was it something else you know it it was purposefully yeah. kind of left up to storytellers to to use as they wish i think <laughs> it's been a few years. Yeah, it's been <laughs> such solid answers. It's been over eight years since the Kickstarter. I just, I just, yeah. Don't know. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Um, so, like, sort of related to that, was there? Do you remember, does anybody remember if there's any directive, sort of from developer or higher, how to make it sync with the other 20th anniversary games, or was it just? Because I know Dodge was taken away, just like the other <laughs> games. But like, was there? Finally. 
<laughs> I, okay. I had the ability list, so I can speak to Dodge being taken away. It wasn't a mandate from the developer, but it was something that I really wanted to do is to keep that uh, that ability list in line with the other 20th anniversary games. Um, so it would feel like the same rule set, you know? Mm. One sense. of the interesting things about the 20th anniversary is, is uh, Rich did encourage on the dev on the dev chat, Rich did encourage everyone to try and standardize the basics, make yeah. sure that willpower worked the same, make sure that the abilities were like, because we all know that people will play them with each other. It's always been what they do at the world of darkness. So, mm-hmm. um, but at the same time, we were also kind of encouraged to treat each game as a bit of an island because it was for the fans of that game. So it wasn't, we weren't as worried about balance or things like that, which is always a kind of a mm-hmm. joke concept anyway. But um, we were encouraged to just be like, just make Changeling. Don't worry about how it plugs into Wraith or Vampire or whatever. Just make Changeling. Hmm. That said, though, it does, I think, subtly C20 did go more towards crossover, at least mechanically. Like, like uh, the abilities are more in sync. Kenning is just awareness now. Grey Mary is mm-hmm. is a cult now. Like it did seem yep. like that. So maybe not direct to, but like was there sort of an idea to make it a little bit more crossover friendly in this edition? Or I think it was more mm-hmm. mechanics wise. Yeah. Than yeah, than story. Yeah, agrees. Else. Yeah, it, it wasn't an intention to make it crossover friendly. It was just to make it a standard mechan you know, standardized mechanics yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So. One of the advantages of 20th anniversary was that the white the original White Wolf games were written years apart and the system was being innovated on as they were doing it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now we can kind yeah. of have a standard system for all of them. So like I think it was more of a mechanics thing than than yeah, than anything else. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go off script here for a second because a question has occurred to me in the midst of all of this. Oh, no. That's not acceptable. So... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't agree to this. Uh... <laughs> Lightning round. Um, so I, I remember the Kickstarter very fondly. I remember watching as each stretch goal was met one by one and like dancing with glee each time. So the stretch goals, all of the Kickstarter goals eventually became the books and supplements. I believe the player's guide was the only one that was like an additional book that wasn't in the original Kickstarter. Was the plan always to kind of have it be a start and then finished kind of thing? Because I know Vampire and Werewolf and Mage, they were like, okay, well, let's let's try for another book and let's try for one more. But Changeling, it seems like once it was finished, it was finished for, well, not for better or for worse, for worse, in my opinion, but. I will say stuff got pitched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I also know that some of the Changeling fandom will be mad, but a lot of the, the stretch goal books were something Rich uh, Thomas came to me and was like, hey, uh, we need stretch goal book ideas. What would people want for Changeling? And I literally had like 30 minutes to come up with things. So I just kind of <laughs> stuff out there. And... Was, was Kiss Black Wagon the first one that you mentioned? <laughs> it might have been um, my wife being a boggin i knew she would very much be angry with me they had been waiting very patiently for their turn as boggins do as yes. they do oh. uh, but there was an effort actually after the kickstarter after all the stretch goal books came out there were pitches that were made but i will say onyx path was facing some other issues with with Paradox and with some of the other, yeah. with the licensing mm-hmm. that made them, Onyx Path really wanted to move away from and move into their own IP. Um, let's put yeah. it that way. So that was my guess. It was. Uh... We did have we did have a, a pitch for a chronicle that was like a like a, a self contained chronicle book mm-hmm. that got fairly far and then got abandoned, as Charlie said. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was called the Carousel of Ages. And... Yeah, it was yeah. such a cool idea. Yeah. So, yeah. There was I was actually I was looking just recently like just as we were getting up setting up here um at the Kickstarter for C20 and I noticed there was a stretch goal that didn't get met that was four at 400,000 will expand the section on Chimera and the C20 book providing more examples of chimerical objects and canyons and more information of tropes on how to incorporate chimerical reality into your changeling games. Does anybody remember anything about that or was ideas that had been kicked around? Or... I had forgotten that was a stretch goal. I assumed that was Lycians, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so I was going to say. <clears throat> Not to pull the curtain back too far, but I'm pretty sure the writing was pretty much all done by the time the Kickstarter started. Mm, so the yes. stretch goals all would have been things that had come after. So I'm not even sure if that uh, okay, came yep. up a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, if it had been met, we probably would have gone back and, and dumped another 20000 on Charlie. Uh, probably, yeah. That would have all been you. Charlie is the chimera master of fabling. I, I did get a lot of the the, the in-the-book ones. Uh, yeah, like, well, I was like, that's one of the things I really liked in C20, like, that it expanded upon for beforehand. So I'm like, oh, yeah. we, we could have more? What? Or was it just was it one of those, uh, we didn't mean to stretch goal, but I guess we did it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, the the because I remember after the Kickstarter, I was having to really rush through some <laughs> some drafts for some stuff for some of the the stretch mm-hmm. goals because they were stuff that was going in the core book, um, like all yeah. the expanded information about courts and uh, yeah. the, some of the other stuff too. It was hmm. it was wild. <laughs> <laughs> so what what are some things? each of you, or if you remember, uh, that you would have liked to explore in the game, but didn't have time or space for? Or or you wrote it and got cut? <laughs> if any, any of those stick in your memory. Uh, very little got cut. Um, yeah. Yeah, it the, was... The only everybody met there. I can remember of mine that got significantly changed. One of the the adversaries, like, which whose names are escaping me, of course, right now. But I think the... the new- no, not the evil Kith versions. The it was like um it it eventually it might have been a Thalian actually it might have just been something else but it was it was the Night Hag I had originally written because we were bringing technology and like social media into things as um like not like a Slenderman type figure but like as another like modern folklore figure like you know something that kind of came out of the internet and like you know like one of those memes that oh yeah becomes yeah, like a child's that. nightmare. So that was the only one I remember of mine that was significantly changed into the Night Hag, which is cool. I actually prefer it as like a, a sleep paralysis demon type thing. Um, <laughs> Wait, was that one of the denizens then? The denizens, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, okay. Now I remember that, yeah. I could have sworn that I remembered that making it into the core book or something along those lines making it into the core book. I think it was something very similar, but it was it okay. was like that was the only thing of mine I can remember being like mm-hmm. yeah. it's not a teardown but but change it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also were there were there anything either any of you had that was like, okay, I would have liked to have done it. I had the idea, but I didn't, you know, write it for this. Was there anything else like that? Uh, for me nothing along those lines. I do there was one section that I was kicking myself after it came out because what I originally wrote was was vague and it got clarified in the editing process and uh, um, it got clarified in a direction that I hadn't intended and <laughs> caused a little bit of controversy afterwards. And I was like, oh, oh. I was a little bit sad about controversy that. Controversy behind the scenes or in the... Uh, no, in the fandom, <laughs> yeah. the, the the shadow court bit. Um, uh, there was uh, a section in there that was like, "That's not what I intended to happen." But there's oh, nothing that you okay. can do about it afterwards. In the core book, you mean? Yeah, in the core book. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could see how that could have gotten. <laughs> yeah. What you're going with it? Yeah, yeah. That helps. I, think. <laughs> I remember going. Like, Why was that there? What was that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, was... it reminds me. It reminds me of like Rich Dansky once told me a story when he was working for Ubisoft. He's like, you may remember in the Splinter Cell game, one of the games has a weapon that doesn't belong. He's like, literally, an executive at the company had a dream and came to the team. He's like, put this gun in the dream for my dream in this game. And they're like, why? <laughs> he's like, so, he's like, everyone who's played Splinter Cell will know what I'm talking about, and that's why it's in there. Wow. <laughs> Uh, that that might be the most changeling thing I've heard all day. <laughs> yeah, I, I I honestly I didn't really have that much that was cut. Um, yeah, I, I was really happy because I got to put some things in that I always wanted to or had had been cut before. I think I had an early idea for the Swan Maidens, but it was very clear very very early. Like we're gonna go with like the kits as standard mm-hmm. with a couple of changes, like the Arcadian she, and we're also going to include the Selkies sort of the, the, the secondary kits that got added as main kits, the Piskies, the Selkies, the Clerican. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so the Swan Maidens wound up being 
put into the player's guide, but that wasn't, mm-hmm. that wasn't a, they weren't slated to be in. I was trying to argue their way in and, and they were just like, no, let's, let's do that. Let's cover them later. Let's do something with them later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the, the good thing about the source books being planned is if we didn't hit on it in the core, we knew we'd yeah. have space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, there were definitely some things like a lot of the Changeling Player's Guide being like the world of Fey, like all the different Fey from around the world was something yeah. that w- that was cut very early because the book was already huge. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. But in the, in the Player's Guide, like how did you choose which parts of the world or what Fey for those and stuff like that? Was there any sort of like guiding ideas or does anybody remember that? Like. Because, I mean, you can't do the entire world. You didn't. No. But like... <laughs> <laughs> what we tried to do, because um, when Luca and I were developing uh, the player's guide, was we went, there's no way we can possibly, every 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 one of these locations could be its own huge core book in itself. So what we tried to do was get people who were familiar, who grew up with that part of the world or had studied mm. that part of the world, or ideally both, and just say, pick some of the stories that will like a sample that will encourage people to go and read more folklore and add more kiths. Like now that we have the create a kith option and rules for it, like we're just, we're going to try and inspire you with, this is a, a sampler of kiths that from that region. And we're not, yeah. when we made it very clear, this is not an end all be all. This is not the only kiths that live in Africa or the only kiths in South America. These are just some sample kiths to kind of get you started. Yeah. So that just, that just highlights both uh, Changeling and World of Darkness in general, we need like more World of Darkness related writers who live in India. Because <laughs> 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 it's always just been the like, why is there's a lot of people there? And we just get nothing on it almost. <laughs> that was that was definitely a note I do remember. A lot of was like, yeah, it's been so Eurocentric. Let's try not to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> did you have something you want to ask? Puka or... uh, I've got plenty of things that I want to ask, yeah. but I'll, I'll go back to the <laughs> list of questions. And so yeah. looking back, is there anything that you made for the 20th anniversary edition that in retrospect you think now, oh, I could do this differently. I could improve upon this. I mean, you sort of like kind of made a couple comments about things, but is there any specific piece that if you could go back now, or if you decide to go back in the future, what would you like to tackle? Legacies. I really want to go oh. back and redo Legacies, and I really want to do it on Storyteller's Vault at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so. what, can you give a teaser of what your idea is? Or? What I would like to redo Legacies as is completely divorce them for the, from the courts. There's no seely and unseely legacy. Instead, every legacy has a night and a day aspect. And mm. it's a case of you are the glamour that you you embody the glamour that you foster, I guess, is a better way to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so depending on the kind of the method and the kind of glamour you gather, it's it, it funnels you to the day or the night uh, mm-hmm. aspect of your legacy. Mm. Please write that up and put it on the vault so that we can have you back and interview about it. <laughs> <laughs> I. I had a, a book that I was thinking about putting it in, but it got derailed uh, over 2023 completely and totally that sometime this summer mm-hmm. I want to revisit. Heads up for Christine. <laughs> cool, because I feel really bad about that. I hope you know I know it just like dropped off my radar. <laughs> oh, oh no, no, no. I, I had, this isn't the time to get into it, but there was so much personal stuff that I had in 2023 that I... I could not even think about the book that year. So cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad things seem to have calmed down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't always mean a lot, but it can be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. Anyone else? Have I, I, I was doing mostly like uh, redoing the kiths and such. So there was not, yeah, you know, there wasn't a lot that I was working on specifically in C20. That was, mm-hmm rules i'd want to redo so, so I, just, I, I want to say i love what you've done i like c20 it's my favorite edition all that stuff there is this one gnawing thing i have about it the change to enchantment D- does anybody know why that happened or what because i just like how much harder it was made and how much 
You've been waiting 49 minutes to ask that question, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, that's been... It's like, <laughs> like house rule number one I had when I went through it. I'm like, no, I'm putting back old enchantment rules. But, like, why? What <laughs> happened there? Or... Um, I think part of that was, if I remember one of the early discussions, was that enchantment... I think it was an overcorrection. I mean, mm-hmm. and I, I'm not going to, I'm mm-hmm. not trying to throw anyone under the bus, but I think because the, the developer, I think said it previously had been too easy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it made it so that sometimes it seemed like if it's this easy, why don't, why, you know, why are more people not aware of the dreaming world, even with the mist? Why are more people like, and so I think they wanted to make it more special. Mm-hmm. And more of that storybook moment when you know the, the scales fall from your eyes and the world op- you know opens up and like instead of something that you can just kind of casually do, but I think it may have been an overcorrection. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not arguing with you on that. Yeah, my other my other nitpicks are mostly overcorrections <clears throat> too, so that makes sense. <laughs> but that most of them are like, oh, it, it overcorrected a little bit, but not it overcorrected a lot. Yeah, it's interesting to hear it like framed that way too. So we're getting ready to do our deep dive into reading the core book, and we're going to you know, look at the new stuff and the changes and everything. But something that has stood out from since we've been doing the podcast and meeting people who are both fans of the original game and fans who came to the game with the 20th edition, it's like changes like that, like enchantment or changes like decoupling seeming from chronological age. To me, the, the thing that I always fall back on is like neither one necessarily seems better or worse to me, but they change the timbre of the game in a way. So it does feel like a different game slightly. And I like that. I like that it feels like a proper new edition where some of the bolts have been tightened, some of the parts have been swapped mm-hmm. out, but functionally it, it delivers the same kind of things that I want from Changeling as a whole, even if... I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to house rule that back to the way it was or whatever, you know. So I think that, yeah, I didn't really have anywhere I was going with that comment. I just yeah. wanted to express it. In some cases, I think that was, yeah, I think that's the result of having some folks who are like, um, you know, who are relatively new to the to the writing gig and but not necessarily new to Changeling, obviously. And some folks who'd been with it for a long time is that we were going to get a different game. And I think what we were going for, a lot of the changes, I think if you step back and take a look at them on the whole, are to try and be more inclusive of making more character choices, making mm-hmm. more types of characters options for this game, making, you know, like opening it up a bit so that you can have characters that, you know, the seeming thing, you know, previously it was literally just what year was your character born? Well, there's your seeming. And like now it can be a little bit more open-ended. You can find, and those are fun stories when people come up with like, I've had people tell me I have a 65 year old childing is like, that's awesome. You know, like that, you know, like Mm -hmm. my grandmother was like that. That's always who I thought about (laughs) was, was my grandmother Mm -hmm. was like this wide, you know, wonderful wide eyed kind of wondrous person who always saw the joy in things. And I'm like, that is why I was like, yes, we should do this. We should make that change because there are people like that out there. And so we tried Mm -hmm. to make the, a lot of the changes are to open things up and be, more create more opportunities for players to customize and and build characters and embody characters that they really could not have necessarily done in the first edition. That was one of the oh it was it <laughs> I mean go back to awkward. I I I kind of stayed out of a lot of the uh design conversations because one, it was difficult for me uh, because sometimes I'd see something that maybe I didn't agree with, but then after reflection realized, no, that's a good idea. But it was, it it just, it was always difficult for me to decide whether what was being discussed, like if I had a negative reaction to it, am I having just a visceral negative reaction? Because at some point in my life, I spent three months, you know, (laughs) fighting with people and trying to figure out how to make this rule work or this aspect of the world work and and now it's being changed <laughs> you know <laughs> or or am i having a negative reaction because i actually think it's you know so it was very hard, difficult to parse those uh different feelings uh so i kind of and plus i as we discussed earlier sometimes i felt like if i said something my the weight of what i said kind of sat there <laughs> a little heavy so so i i kind of didn't want i really didn't want that 
because people had such, I mean, it was so exciting seeing all the ideas that people had and, and, and just the excitement for it was, uh, it was a great way to come back in, into working on tabletop role-playing games. <laughs> seeing all that excitement. Right on. We're actually doing quite well. We only have one question left on our slate and it's, it's a, a dicey one as role-playing game Ooh. questions tend to be. So do any of you have thoughts that you are willing to share on the hypothetical possibility of a fifth edition of Changeling, and would you want to be involved? And Charlie, you can't see me looking through the screen, but I am because. Uh... <laughs> um, well, said earlier that things were pitched. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that never took off either. So. Yeah. But yes, if if a fifth edition were to happen, I would I would love to work on it. I I really do like the update to some of the fifth edition core mechanics, and I think that the equivalent of a hunger die in Changeling the Dreaming could be a lot of fun to play with. But would it be a banality die or a glamour die? That's the... <laughs> or a nightmare die? I'm trying to remember what I called it in the uh, in the thing that I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Searching for PDF. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, But yes, I I think that there's a lot of potential in the uh, atmosphere that 5th edition has gone for, for Changeling the Dreaming. Get at that really gritty street level fairies in a world that that cannot abide their existence sort of feel. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think there's so much potential there. We have a very different world today than it was then. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was Nightmare Dice, by the way. Okay. Nightmare Dice, that was it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm torn on that, personally. Um, as I've told people over and over again, Changeling was the love of my life as far as as far as working on games, um, and still is in a certain kind of way. But yes, I would love to work on a new edition of Changeling. Um, on the other hand... I, there's part of me that would like to leave it to to new people uh, who've who've sort of made it their own, like Charlie. <laughs> um, and and, and no, seriously, I'd, I'd kind of like to see it, you know, like just just you know, sort of stepping back like a parent and you know, watching where it goes, you know, mm-hmm. um, without being involved in it. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm torn. <laughs> this would depend on a lot of things at that time. Yeah, I feel like it, it depends is is a yep. good answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel much the same, um, especially if, uh, to a degree with Ian. Like, um, And I, I saw like when uh, By Night Studios did their version of Changeling LARP, um, mm-hmm. and I was asked to come on board just to kind of, not write, but just kind of consult. You know, just they they invited me, which is very nice. They didn't have to do that, but they invited me to come check it out. And there were a lot of decisions where I was like, I was having Ian's problem. I was like, I don't know how I feel about this because for a long time I was the changeling guy. That was part of my, like, I, I was very protective of the LARP changeling community and and everything. And like handing it over to other people was really tough, but also they're going to try and do new stuff and do different things. And maybe that's better than me coming back and, you know, doing my, my same old, same old, you know? So it's a, it's a tough question. Like I always want to be involved in changeling, but as Ian said, you know, should I be? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm doing new things now, you know? So maybe Mm -hmm. I should focus on those. (laughs) Yeah. But if I have my say, Ian, you, you can totally come back on the 50th anniversary. That'll... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming I still have eyesight. And... <laughs> That's when you get the full-on grump of back in my day. <laughs> when Changing first came out. <laughs> I can do that now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is helpful or not, but we are closer to the 50th anniversary than the launch of the game at this point. So it's not that far. Don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah. I need to go take some Tylenol and be right back. Yeah. <laughs> so times like this, I remember I tend to be the baby of a lot of my friend groups. Um, like, yeah. Pete, you were you were 17, 18 when you were writing Shining yeah. Host? 
Yes. Which Pete knows the math on this. That means I was at the time when he was writing that like four. So <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> if it helps, Christine, when when the Shining Host came out, that's what got me into Changeling and the World of Darkness and LARPing and everything. Um, I I was the baby of that group. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good, and you know what? That's my favorite thing about you know, like people love to talk about edition wars, but like find the one you like and play it. <laughs> Or mix them up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, mix them up. Yeah. True, true, yes. I like yeah. this set from this one and this set from that one. And yeah. Never, ever, has never, ever made sense to me all the times people have edition wars and everything. And just, you know, like, it's like we go around and burn their old books. That's what, the, you know, from <laughs> the way people talk about it, it's, it's really the, yeah. you know, it's like we sneak into their house at night and burn their Changeling first editions. Like, yeah, we're, yeah. we're not walking around with the Monty Python card. Bring out second ed. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that, I think that is not you guys. I think that's the fandom. People will be like, well, this edition was, well, well, this new edition came out. This where all the all the other books don't exist and yeah, don't they're matter. In, they're or, invalid. Or the yeah. new one's terrible, and all I care about is the old thing. And one of my favorite things to tell people about working in the games industry is we are so much more chill about our games than the fans. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Which I'm not saying that is a derogatory thing about the fans, but like sometimes fans will like try and corner you and get you to be, and they're like weirdly upset that you're not like super you know devastated that there's a new edition or something You're like oh okay yeah. cool you know like <laughs> like I, I don't know how else to put it it's just you know sometimes i've had people be like aren't you mad that they're doing this new thing i'm like no it's cool let them do their thing like oh <laughs> i know i know every time we interview like an, a, a writer or something i'm always like uh, having to suppress the well, on page forty-six, on page forty-two, it's, 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 what did you mean by that? And, I get asked questions about that, that on books I worked on twenty years, you know, some years ago, and it's like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know. What were you? It's like bold of you to assume I remember what words I wrote on that book out of all of them. Um, I always <laughs> yeah. quote uh, Indiana Jones's father in the Last Crusade. I wrote it down so I wouldn't have to remember. remember. <laughs> yeah. Of course, then we get the same thing like hosting this podcast and somebody will be like uh, at, at minute 46 you said like, yeah. 46 to episode 37 this. you said yeah, yeah. 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 What you're talking about. yeah. <laughs> i will say if i could snap my fingers and get rid of every copy of first edition changely i would but that's oh, no <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah. it has that wonderful picture of dr bashir in it from deep space nine it's yeah. okay if i can Keep some of the art, maybe, but the, <laughs> yeah. everything relating to bunk cards. I, I still reference the first edition book sometimes for inspiration, uh, mainly mm. the art, but but you know some of the some of the text. So what we're really yeah. asking is, does Ian have a bearskin rug with a balloon on it uh, somewhere in his house? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the name of the, the author chat. It was the Bears with Balloons thread. It was Bears with Balloons. <laughs> oh, oh, beautiful. I thought that was more second edition, the Bear with Balloons. Yeah, it was. It, that, it was. That, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. It's yes, true. Yes, it's true. Yes. That was entirely Rich Thomas uh, trying to get my goat, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, it really <laughs> was because I, I was pushing back so much on that aspect of Changeling and wanting to make it less silly. And and well, it's bears with balloons, you know, and and the puka bear thing just became a thing. Um, <laughs> and now, yeah. now we wear it as a badge of pride, though, as a changeling mm -hmm. fandom, yes. because like when Good. when people when like vampire players are like your game's stupid, it's like well, we have all the fun, so go mope in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, the vampire players, you could just pull out the uh, Dark Ages vampire with the Malkavian with the fish. And he's the like, fish. Yeah. Yeah, the fish no. oh, I would say small. Vampire in Dark Ages is the first one book I found in the wild that got me into the world of darkness. Yeah. No, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, that's just the other. That's the other like you, the art thing where you're like, what? Was this? Yeah, like what was going on? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I want to say something there that th these days, uh, it seems like game designer, like the developers, have a fair amount of say what, what of the art. Like, I mean, yeah. for everything I do now, I actually do art briefs for everything, which shocked the heck out of me first time. Yeah. That. Back then. I had almost zero say mm. over the art. Yeah. I mean, like none. And in fact, often when I specifically asked for something or asked for something not to be, that's what I would get. I'd get the opposite. Yeah. 
because and, really uh, cool. I get that for the LARP books too, for not just Shining Host, but other LARP books I worked on. And people are like, where do these pictures come from? I'm like, man, I don't know. They didn't tell me anything. I didn't see the art till it went to press. Like, <laughs> you know, um, they sent me my copy and I went, that's what that looks like. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. Writing up art, like art briefs and stuff is, is wonderful. It's, it's really great, but we, that was never part of the process back in the day. No, <laughs> I mean, I had, I did have books for, I mean, this is sort of pulling the curtain back. I think I've, I've complained about this one before, but yeah, I was like, okay, this book focuses a lot on kids and I know white wolf is going all like R rated and everything. That's like the push right now. It's like, can we just really, this is a lot of kids. Can we keep it, keep it toned down? Yeah. What do I get? Naked lesbian satyrs going at it. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, the kids got to learn about Bacchanalia sometime, I guess. And that was the one and only black dog label changeling book. <laughs> Not described anywhere in the text. No. <laughs> you know, there's nothing. <laughs> no, Not, not at all. Remotely related to the text. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nor were there bears with balloons. <laughs> Someone made that an innuendo somehow. Uh, yeah. We'll point out the bear with the balloon was, I believe, also not wearing pants. So. I mean, neither is Winnie the Pooh, so like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I remember right, he had his nice little vest on, so he was clothed. It's a... Yeah, <laughs> clothes as far as stuffed animals are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so do we have any other questions we want to throw out there, or... I think those are here. those are all the ones we had. I did want to um, briefly pull up. So for every episode, we kind of pull our listeners and ask them to submit questions or comments or whatever. So a few of the questions that we asked are from them, but there are also just two comments I wanted to briefly share, which are uh, Mala Estrella says, thanks for keeping the dreaming alive. And Elaris oh. says, my sincere gratitude for your contributions to this wonderful setting. I do not think it untoward to say that Changeling is a world that means much to those listening. Thank you for helping to keep the bale fires burning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I've, I've talked about this with a, a couple of my friends a lot, but like a lot of the time we do our project, we send it off. We know the book comes out, but we don't really know the reach of it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. little comments like that are just like, that'll make someone's day. Yes. Like, do you know what's, <laughs> what's really great about doing this podcast for the last <laughs> two years and change at this point is like changeling 20 has ended it is over and people are still discovering it and still Mm -hmm. you know showing up and just like full of wonder and full of excitement and it's fantastic it still has that impact and it's still reaching people i'd say at at least once a week on average there's somebody coming in going i just discovered change yeah (laughs) (laughs) and that's just in our discord not anybody want to run a game for me yeah Yeah. that's in part what brought me back to doing tabletop games is like 10 ish years and i was doing um computer games and you know the feedback you get on computer games from players is well you you, i'm sure yeah yeah. (laughs) but uh, not not always as friendly but I had been gone for, I don't know how many, you know, decade plus more than far more than a decade, almost two. And I, about once a month, every, every couple of weeks or even, I, I still get a random email from people, you know, just saying thank you for, for the, this awesome game and, and telling me how it impacted their lives or whatever. And mm-hmm. I mean, there were a couple that brought me to tears literally. And it's like, you know what? I should be doing this. <laughs> you know, I, I, this is what I'm doing. Not yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are two moments that really got me. One was I had worked on a, an Onyx Path Fiction anthology and it sold out at Gen Con. And I like, can you have a positive panic attack? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> but that's what yes, happened. You can. I, that's what happened. I, I was having one before starting this interview, you guys. So. <laughs> I believe um, the technical term is a squee. Yes, it was nice. It was a full on squee. Um, one of my friends was with me and witnessed that. And I, I, I think I changed forever in his eyes. Um, but also more directly on this, and like I don't mean this to sing my own praises. I don't mean this in any way. But like someone I know had told me, "Oh, my friend found the jump start, and that's what really made the setting click for them." And I like almost mm-hmm. started crying because I mm-hmm. did the jump start, and I was mm-hmm. like, "I don't, I don't know how the, how people find this and how they, you know, interact with it." So like that is amazing. 
<laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, I think maybe Ian will back me up on this. It's also, it's such a different world than the old days of White Wolf because creators <laughs> and fans are so much more easily and commonly connected. Yes. Um, and there's good and bad to that, obviously, uh, in some cases. But like, yeah, it really used to be like a message in a bottle. You would make your game, you'd see it printed, you'd know it was out there. And if you ran into someone at a convention and they knew who you were, which was unusual, they might be like, hey, I like your game. But like nowadays you get so much feedback from people and it can be very, it can be very good because how do I put this? You write games for love, not money. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it, and so, but like, which is funny because there are the certain segment of fans that are all convinced that we're like rolling in cash and that the companies are like mega conglomerates. Um, Everyone I know who works on games has a day job. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally went straight from mine to this podcast. So. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Me too. And I remember people back in the day used to spell White Wolf Games with a dollar sign on the S and I'm like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, so it is it is nice though to see the to be able to be more like aware of the community and to get that kind of feedback and yeah but it can be toxic but changeling fandom has never been toxic for me it's no. it never yeah. it never has not like vampire can get pretty awful werewolf can get pretty awful and there's lots of good fans in those don't don't get me wrong mm-hmm. but changeling has never had that problem for me it just hasn't same. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe I've never run into it. Maybe I'm sure there are people out there yeah. who are. But... No, I, I've like done changeling LARPs and I've done vampire LARPs and there's a same number of LARPers, completely different number of toxic players. Okay. I think that... Whole different vibe. In yeah. The mm-hmm. <laughs> One of the really things is. whenever, whenever my, my old LARP team, we used to go to Collins and run like the changeling component of a multi-genre world of darkness LARP. We would inevitably have people who, came over from the other games because we were having fun and they weren't like they're like you the changelings look like you're having a good time so I, I, can i make a changeling character my vampire character sucks because so, <laughs> we're allowed to visibly laugh and enjoy ourselves <laughs> oh, my and... favorite my favorite thing i've ever seen is just a meme and it's the the green marble cover and it's let's <laughs> let's dress up and act petty yeah <laughs> And oh. it's so true, and I love it so much because that's 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 just vampires in any medium. But <laughs> I remember I was running a changeling LARP. I was running the I was the storyteller for the changeling section, and a couple of vampires came looking to attack one of my players. I'm like, "You'll have to wait. He's the red cap is currently eating a church," and they're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and they said, "What do you mean?" I said. I didn't. I meant what I said. He's eating a church. <laughs> like it's gonna take like, him a while. Brick by brick. Did he unhinge his jaw? Yeah. What's <laughs> he used Quicksilver and just Pac Man that thing? Uh, <laughs> 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 and the vampire players basically backed away slowly and never, never actually came after. Them. <laughs> well, they're lost. <laughs> I mean, there has to be some art that lets you call up the sun. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, any other any other comments or things that people want to share, or we can segue into our final outro portion. Well, we do want to, yeah. So, anything. On this so, yeah, by by outro portion, I mean having everybody talk about where to find them on the internet if they so desire, and and any projects that we're projects, out, yeah. yeah. But for, first, is there anything else about C twenty you wanted to? I think that's about it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, on the subject of people coming up to you and bothering you in non-toxic ways, uh, <laughs> are there places that people can reach out to any of you or work that you currently have in progress that you want to shout out? Or recently came out <laughs> that you want to shout out. Or recently came out, yes. Are we doing this alphabetically again? Should I start? <laughs> you can go for it. it. Yes, go ahead, start. Go ahead. Right. I, have to ask, I have to ask Ian if I can if I can talk about some stuff. He knows what. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It's fine. <laughs> uh, well, once again, I am Christine. Um, if you want to see what I've worked on, you can check out thepetitewarlock.com because I'm a short person. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also listen to me play Pathfinder 2nd Edition on the Cracked Die podcast if you want to check that out. We're on uh, 
We're probably on your favorite podcatcher. If not, we're on Spotify. And um, that's me. I guess that means it's my turn. Uh, I am on, uh, you can find me online uh, as Puka Knight on pretty much any social media channel that exists. Uh, I have not been very active in the past year. Just uh, just a heads up if anybody wonders why my, most of my channels are dead these days. Um, <laughs> but uh, But I nominally still maintain them. Uh, let me see. Uh, what have I worked on recently? Uh, Trinity Continuum Ether just came out. Uh, that was one that I worked on. And for Changeling the Dreaming, I have a project that I started year before last, and I would like to get back to it this year and hopefully get it out sometime before the end of this year. So, so that we can interview you. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly to 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 visit some 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 areas that could use uh, a little bit of love in the well, post C twenty C twenty Corbel era, but uh, but yeah, sure. Why not? Why not both? <laughs> I guess I'll go next. Uh, Ian Lemke. Uh, I'm currently a developer for Green Ronin. Uh, where I uh, developed the Expanse role-playing game uh, and uh, just swapped. I was doing Fantasy Age, but I'm actually taking over Cthulhu Awakens and, uh, and Rockman's going to be taking over uh, Fantasy Age from now on. But uh, we've got some big Expanse news coming soonish in the next couple of few months, so keep your eyes peeled on, on Green Ronin channels. I also uh, have my own company, which I just started, did a Kickstarter for a game called uh, Nevermore, a role-playing game of American Gothic Horror, uh, Nepenthe Games, uh, a website, you know, um, Facebook, uh, all those things. You can find Nepenthe Games out there and, uh, and my game Nevermore, which should be hopefully out out soon. We had a successful Kickstarter. It's taken me a little bit longer than I expected or hoped, uh, but I'm, I'm rolling into the last chapter and a half of cleaning them up and then the, the last few chapters get edited and, and the layout so soon. Um, that's me. Okay. Uh, you can find me at uh, peterwoodworth.com. I don't update the site as often as I should, but I, I do get any contact inf- uh, messages that come through. I still answer those promptly. And uh, I think the last thing I wrote was my review of the Starfall LARP from last year. So where Yay. Ian and I were hanging out being not legally distinct Jedi people. And That's the first time we met in person, too. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, it was the first time we actually met. And uh, I I just worked on Ether along with Charlie, so that's that's coming out. And for Trinity Continuum, uh, I have a couple of Expanse projects that are coming out uh, under Ian's watchful eye. And, Feel free to. <laughs> uh, well, we've got a couple source books and a couple of the online supplements. So some trades of the Expanse online supplements, and uh, I think. I think the next two actual books uh, Soul System out. is coming soon. <laughs> yeah, Soul <laughs> System is coming soon, and there's another one after that that I'm working on, and uh, yeah, uh, that's where I'm at. We'll have uh, lots of links and things in the show notes to this episode. So yeah, uh, you can find us, Changeling the Podcast, at changelingthepodcast.com. You can join our Facebook, go to our Facebook page if you're on Facebook for Changeling the Podcast. You, if you're not already, you can listen to us uh, on all sorts of podcasts, feeds but one of them uh, also through youtube for changeling the podcast and if you're on there please like and subscribe uh you can go to our discord at, and talk to us at discord.me slash ctp you can send us an email uh podcast at changeling the podcast.com and you can send us a toot on mastodon changeling pod at dice.camp these links as well will be in the show notes yeah and once again, thanks everybody for coming. This is yes. uh, this was great. Thanks for having us. Yeah. 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 And once again, uh, I'm Josh. I remain Puka. And remember, next year's the 10th anniversary of the 20th anniversary of Changeling the Dreaming. Josh, don't you know math is banal? <laughs> <laughs> not in 20th anniversary. <laughs> not if it's a not if it's a limerick. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> As our honored guests retreat back to their freeholds, dream burrows, and dank hideaways, we won't tell you who said it where, we are left with more questions than we had going into this recording. For example, where did that bear's pants go anyway? Do developers double as secret bookshelf burglars? How many chomps does it take to get to the center of a cathedral? 
Naturally, we'll have to convince our guests to come back in order to get answers to these, but until then, we'll abide in agonizing uncertainty. Thankfully, our spirits are strengthened by the support that we get from you, our listeners, and we hope that you'll continue to help us bring fae-flavored content to you as often as we can. A hundred thousand extra special thanks go out to our patrons, who are Derek, Dorkadas, Elorus, Hugo the Bog Person, Ia Bull, Jason Vines, Oreo, Raz Caboose, Sandshigger, Sija, Terry Robinson, Tricerabeth, and Victor Tori. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can sign up for our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash changelingthepodcast, or alternatively, please leave a review on the podcast listening platform of your greatest convenience. We hope this episode has inspired you to get out there and create, and to join in the conversation about this game we all love. Until then, or just until next episode, keep on dreaming. <laughs>